are you in the market for trying to find a flexible folding panel that's fairly portable, that doesn't take up a lot of space when you're traveling, and doesn't cost a lot of money? This might be one of the panels that you might want to have a look at, or like I said, one of, because there are many different types of these types of flexible folding panels. I found this panel from uh, Dokyo. Recently, I have been added onto the AliExpress influencer program. So full disclosure, I did receive this product from AliExpress. And I will give you my first impressions unboxing, and I'll show you some of the numbers and share with you uh, some of the things I like about the panel and my final thoughts and conclusion at the very end of the video. Right off the bat, we're going to we're going to quickly talk about the unboxing experience. I mean, it was fine, did the job, you know, maybe the the boxing could have been a little bit more rigid, but it it also wasn't is not a very, you know, large panel. It was good enough. It was adequate enough, I think, for transport. It was well padded. When the panel was inside the box, I noticed that it had a really nice thick foam pad, but the foam pad just wasn't very rigid. That was the only thing. I opened up the box and then we're presented with a bunch of accessories. A cable, which is from XT60 to alligator clips to, to attach basically any lead acid or lithium ion 12 volt battery. And you get a bunch of like little adapter, barrel adapters. You get uh, a three meter cable, which is going from an SAE uh, plug over to a XT60. I would have preferred if the plug was maybe water resistant or possibly even maybe another XT60 plug. On, on the fabric, there's a small gap where you can actually have the have the cable pass through the material so it makes it easier so that the cable isn't sticking outwards in front of the, the, the cells. It goes behind the cells. Maybe that's why they chose an SEA. What's kind of cool with this panel, which you really don't get with a lot of other panels, is that you get a charge controller. So you've got a separate charge controller. You've got a PWM. It's not an MPPT charge controller, but it you know it's very basic. It will do the job. Um, there is a certain amount of voltage that you can't go over. So I, I believe this this for, from my testing, it will not go over 24 volts. It'll just say no, it's too much voltage. But the thing is you can put up to 10 amps. So you could in theory plug in a different panel. Let's say you've got a rigid panel that you've got lying around. You can plug a rigid panel straight into this and you can use this as a charge controller. It's got USB ports on it. That's really neat. Um, so I, I and it's got some other it's got two extra XT, XT60 plugs and you can plug in a battery or which will give you the standard voltage for batteries and for charging batteries and then the the other one is just load so you can put like lights or something like that and you can also toggle that on and off with the charge controller. Um, I like the fact that it comes with a charge controller because usually those cost a little bit extra and usually they're fixed onto the solar panel. So it's kind of nice that it's detached from it. Uh, so that is a pl plus side is the charge controller is it's portable. It's not attached or fixed to the panel. So we're going to talk about the pros and, uh, of, of this panel. My idea behind why I would be looking for a panel like this. So basically, if you're in the market for like, if you're camping or if you're if you're in a caravan or if you are in a car and you're traveling around, you might want a panel that is foldable, that doesn't take up a lot of room, that can you can just fold out and it'll just give you that power immediately. And I will get into some of the pros and cons behind having a flexible versus a rigid panel. But essentially, when you're when you're using those very small panels for like backpacking those panels typically can only go up to about you know something like 20 to 30 watts or something like that like i've got a i've got a backpacking one from decathlon and it's not very impressive in terms of its wattage it's fine for charging a phone um but that's about it and this this panel is interesting because once you fold it out and you've got full sun you're definitely able to charge your phone i think even on a cloudy day you can charge your phone or a tablet at the, probably at the same time on a cloudy day that's something that is a plus side with a panel like this so it's a lot much larger surface area to get more sunlight another pro about this panel is once i got it out of the box i i obviously tested it one of the things that's just nice when we look at the the, the size comparison if we take um one of my eco worthy panels and we look at the size it's about the same footprint roughly just a little bit smaller when we look at the panels folded out they're about the same size so one one panel which is folded out compared to the flexible one it's about the same size but what's interesting is that when you fold this panel it takes up half 
the space it does have a have a space saving you know it's a bit like a folding bicycle it's the same idea same principle is that you're able to save space when you're in the car uh or if you're if you're tight for space generally also i like that it's fairly lightweight it only weighs two kilograms uh on the back of the panel there's a little pouch that you can store a bunch of things. A bit of a, a con, I suppose, with this panel is that you might need to give it some rigidity when you're angling it to the sun. So you might want to put it on some kind of like cardboard box or a frame, a wooden frame or an al aluminium metal kind of frame of some sort, um, whatever you want to use. Sometimes I was using wooden crates. I mean, you got to get creative. Uh, something to give it just a flat surface because these are quite flexible panels. Oddly, when I, when I would uh, make it a bit concave, I was weirdly getting more wattage. Don't understand why, but that was the effect that I had. They, they seem to be fairly well made. Um, again, I'm, I'm going to be using this a little bit here and there, but I've already got tons of, like at my place, I've got loads of rigid panels that I use for, for solar already. And this flexible one is more just as like a backup and also to take with me when going somewhere else. The main idea behind this, which I find really useful, is that you can basically run a mini fridge directly off this panel. Um, now, AliExpress are doing a, a sale, which I should probably mention, and they're probably going to do something around December as well. Uh, but right now they're doing an 11.11 11 sale. Um, now, if you can pick up this panel for, let's say, 60 bucks or less, it's not a lot of money. And I will show you the real numbers about what I was able to get with this panel. So when we plug this in directly into a solar generator, because you can do this, you can plug it directly in. Um, you can e you can even bypass the, 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 the charge controller. With a solar generator, it's already got the charge controller into it. Um, so what you what you can do is you just take the cable and it's got another adapter on the end where you where you can change the XT60, goes into a female plug and then it changes into a DC barrel. Then you can plug this directly into your your solar generator, another one which has a DC barrel, which is fairly common on most solar, solar generators. You can also plug it into uh, the, the other one, like my FossiBot, which is, has an XC60 plug. You don't need an adapter for that. It just goes straight in. Now, personally, I was able to get 50 watts maximum sometimes around 45 watts this was out on a clear sunny day uh in the month of i think it was november i tested this so that that's the numbers in terms of voltage basically what happens is that sometimes what can happen is that when you connect a panel and you put it under load into the into your device for example the solar generator you can get some wattage dropping basically um, so that's just something to to keep in mind and i find that sometimes manufacturers they measure um the the highest absolute maximum range that a panel can get but actually in the real world it's it's usually a lot less than that um, so in my real world testing i was able to get about 50 watts so what can i do with that like I said, you can you can run a mini fridge off that. So the mini fridge uses something between 25 to 35 watts. And I find that to be a, just a, a perfect scenario. So let's say you're going out camping some, somewhere for the day or you're going even for a day hike somewhere or you're going camping for a couple of nights. You can just take something like this. And if you know you're going to get sunlight, you can just plop that outside of the car, get have it on you know a sunny area, pitch it well, uh, and you'll be able to run, run your mini fridge inside the van or inside your car, your vehicle. And it's super lightweight, super portable, thin and et cetera. You can also run, you know, um, small laptops, for example, MacBook Airs or MacBook Pro or some kind of laptop that doesn't use over 50 watts, I would say. You can also charge small generators. I wouldn't charge big solar generators with this one. It will take too long. Um, but um, you, you can, for example, take my... I have a very small little mini portable solar generator that i still use it's like a little port portable power station um, and that works quite well you can charge a tablet and a phone at the same time you can plug in your computer and run that uh, one of the cons that i'd like to talk about is which is just just uh, fundamental when you're trying to compare flexible panels and even foldable panels to rigid panels now 
Dokio actually offer a rigid panel, which I was interested in having a look at as well. You can have a look if you prefer to have a rigid panel. I think there are advantages to having them. Well, number one is that rigid panels are going to last way longer. So if you're looking for just longevity, you should just go with a glass rigid panel and Dokio actually sell that as well. So you can have a look at that if you prefer to have something that's more rigid and long lasting. There's also other ones on the market, but that's the one you can also have a look at that if you want. I think it's like a backup solution, so that's what I recommend it for. Again, if you can pick this up for on a discount with the AliExpress sale that's going on right now, have a look at that. Um, and also, you can have a look at my eco-worthy review in case you're interested. I also have the, the panel that I demonstrated where the size is, is about the same size. You can have a look at that one where I review that panel, and you can look at that for a comparison if you want. So that's it. We're going to be having a look at some other devices from uh, AliExpress they sent to me have a look at the folding chair and the portable shower that i got from them recently and i'm going to keep an eye out for some other random useful aliexpress deals i find on aliexpress you can find you can find pretty much anything literally anything and uh, thanks for watching like subscribe and check out those other videos and that's about it